I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, Six Pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. This is Matt once again. What about to another review? This is another Patreon review. This time for Total Meltdown Two, who wanted me to watch and review the John Woo film Bullet in the Head. Now, this is a film I had actually not heard of, and I do like John Woo movies for the most part. I mean, my favorite film of all time is Hard Target. I mean, over there I have a fan cut that I edited with the warp print and theatrical version. Because how much I love Hard Target. I love Broken Arrow. Hard Boiled is great. I. Not a fan of Face Off. I'm sorry. That's just me. Uh, I like Paycheck. I like. The Killer. Not really a fan of Wind Talkers. I think I saw. A Better Tomorrow. One or two, I don't know which one. I wasn't that impressed with it. Other than some of the action scenes, of course. This was a welcome surprise. I really enjoyed this movie. I would like to get this one day in my collection. Because the, the film, I thought, it had some really hard-hitting action. But it was a good emotional story, too. I gotta say, this definitely brought the feels to it. With the characters, these three guys, their friendship, some betrayal, some sorrow, and some backstabbing, and some retribution. Let me put it that way. And it's extremely well directed by John Woo. The action scenes are beautiful. Uh, the story, you have these three guys, uh, Tony Leon, who is in Hard Boiled. Jati Chion, not Jati Chan, but Jati Chion and Waze Li, I'm sure I butcher that, are three friends. Uh, one of them is actually getting married. And the three, they get each other's back. The beginning, I was a bit unsure of because not a song I thought I would be hearing. I mean, I recognize this song and it's like a 50s version of oh, I'm a believer. It's almost like a Grease type of music. I'm ready for John Travolta to so it up let you fight, let you fight. Yeah, wait. But I mean it, it wasn't what I expected. Maybe it makes a bit sense because it's supposed to take place in 1967 when the movie starts. And one thing leads to another. A gang leader beats up one of them. So they try to help. The gang leader dies. And the three go, oh wow, we gotta leave Hong Kong. Uh, otherwise we'll get arrested, go to jail, bad things will happen. So they leave... They decide to go to Vietnam because, hey, there's this thing we could do. We could sell these painkillers. And then things just don't go right for them. And this definitely feels like an epic movie. Now, I don't mean running time. I mean, it's... It's, what, two hours? Well, it's a little over two hours. So it's a little, it's a little bit lengthy. But it didn't really bother me in this instance because... It felt like a lot happened because like everywhere they turn, there's another riot happening 
or another bad thing happening. The action scenes are so well designed, well done. And at the end of the story got me invested in and kind of pulled me in. This sounds stupid and because it's not the same plot, but in a weird way, this is only like a better version of Dead Presidents that I saw recently. Again, it, it sounds stupid because it's not the same plot. But uh, I don't know, for some reason, it reminded me that I don't know why. Like this one, I didn't hate Dead Presidents. It was okay. But this one was a bit more fulfilling. I can just... You just wonder what's going to happen next. There's suicide bombers. Suicide bomber hits these guys' car when they get there. They have all these people like we didn't do anything, and then they kill the real accomplice in the middle of the street. And it really just says that Vietnam is dangerous in this time period. Simon Lamb is in the film. Now, Simon Yam, not Lamb, Yam, I recognize him because he was the bad guy in George R. Van Damme's film, Wake of Death, which I really enjoy. I think it's one of Van Damme's best directed video films. I reviewed that when I did my Van Damme marathon where I reviewed all of George R. Van Damme's movies. Those reviews are still up on the channel. And Wake of Death, I'm like, this guy does a good job as a villain. He's got good look and presence to him. And here he's a good guy. This is a guy who... He's a badass. He's like a, I don't even want to call him hitman assassin. Like he, he knows what he's doing and he really likes his girl and wants to get her out and these three guys help him. And Simon Yam, he just kicking ass, taking names. I'm not even going to go into the action scenes because I want you guys to experience them yourself. I mean, it's John Woo. It's glorious. There is a copy on YouTube, but be wary of that because... It cuts a little bit of the violence out. I remember like there's a point where a character gets a knife in the head and, and the link down below, not down below, but on YouTube where it's in parts. Just like bull in the head, 1990, that shot's cut down. And then it uses a different ending because there's two endings. There's the ending, which is how most people saw, which is a big action ending. And then in the on YouTube, there's an ending that's, was the original ending, which was much shorter boardroom ending. But yeah, there are different cuts of the film. Be wary of that. <laughs> I don't know if the film's on Blu-ray. I don't know which cuts of the film on Blu-ray or DVD. I don't know anything about that. Someone can feel free to educate me. But yeah, it really felt like an epic f movie. Th this felt like... Yeah, it's going to sound stupid for comparison. Almost a, a Hong Kong version of The Deer Hunter. I, yeah, I know that sounds silly. It's like, damn, what's going to happen to these guys next? Like, they get the girl, but it doesn't work out. Then there's a point where they caught POW camp. and I don't want to spoil the rest of it. I will when I get into spoilers, but I'll just say I thought how these three characters play off each other and then like what happens, a little bit heartbreaking, a little bit, yeah, you get that revenge, you know, betrayal. I I, I thought John Woo actually did a very efficient job on giving a bit of the, the feels to it as well as the great action and violence we expect. Uh, the actors did their jobs well. It was cool to see Tony Leone again, who was an hard boiled. Cool to see Simon Yam, who I remember is the villain Wake of Death. He's a good guy here. I really don't have much issues with it, at least to me. But give more on the spoiler starting now. What happens is one of them starts getting a bit obsessed with this gold. Now, maybe I would like to a little bit more. There's some, but a little bit more establishment as to why this guy is so obsessed with the gold. I mean, 
you do a little bit, but at the same time, the fact that he's ready to turn on his friends, maybe a little bit more context with that. I don't know how, maybe a few scenes or the writing, but yeah, the other three people, one of them is getting more upset with this gold to the point that, you know, they get caught in POW camp. Uh, you have a good scene where, like, Jackie Chion, he's more of the steered, I won't, I won't say wide-eyed innocent, but he's being forced to shoot these people. He's going a little bit crazy, and Tony Leone's like, hey, we all go back to Hong Kong, or no one will. And they both start laughing, and then they start shooting the bad guys. That was a good moment. But during this old battle, and Simon Yam comes in, he's with the Americans, and he comes in this village and fucks up the village of the POW, like these bad guys. But the guy who's obsessed with the gold, he loses it. And even when his friend's trying to help him, and he gets shot for it, and he's screaming in pain, the guy's like, be quiet, be quiet, oh, I'll kill you, I'll kill you. And he shoots his friend in the back of the fucking head. And then, like, he doesn't really show a lot of remorse for that. And that's what I mean, like, I, that's the one bit of the, of the script of my... At least maybe there show him some, a bit more remorse or... And, or, I mean, maybe a bit more build-up as to why he's so crazed by this, by this point. I uh, just... Maybe that's the one issue of the script I, I'll give... But then he leaves, taking this goal, and then he starts shooting innocent people. Uh, again, then I'm like, why is this guy now so 180 crazy? Again, it's a little. I thought they they reached a little bit with that character. Just a little bit too far, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, huh? So again, the more I think about it, that's the one issue I have with it. Maybe a few more scenes or a few more bits. But the, the one guy, Jaddy Chun, who got shot in the head, he's not dead. And Sam and Yam gets him and they get out of there. Some time passes. Tony Leung comes back, realized too late to be with his wife and kid. Or that's what it seems. Maybe a workout, maybe not. Sam and Yam tells him, hey, your buddy, he survived, but the bullet's still stuck in his head, hence the title. So he's crazed and wants drugs he's a drug addict kind of like chris Tucker was a drug addict maybe maybe the vietnam and the the friends and um, drug addiction maybe that's re remind me of dead presidents i don't know and then this sad moment where tony on has to put his friend out of his misery because this bullet stuck in the guy's head and he's crazed and can't do anything about it and this is where Depending on which cut of the film, the original ending, which is the one on different parts in YouTube, he just goes to the boardroom where now his his asshole buddy is rich, has the friend stole, puts it down and goes, yeah, you didn't finish the job. Yeah, that bullet stuck in his head and looked at you, you're rich and this and that. And he grabs the guy and then you get the idea he killed him. But I do understand why an audience would be like, eh. I'm sure some people prefer because it's more of an emotional ending. But I thought the action ending had the emotion as well. I definitely prefer that where totally on this other guy, they get in a big car chase scene as in a parking garage and outside. I thought it was a really nice moment where the two are fighting each other between cars and then it flashes back to the beginning where they're, the three of them are riding for fun on their bikes and sort of back and forth. This is how they were at the beginning of the film. This is how it's come to the end. I thought that was a nice juxtaposition, comparison, I should say. I, I prefer that. And you did like explosions and shooting back and forth. Much more of a satisfying ending. And ultimately, still does the same thing. And, you know, he had to kill one friend out of mercy, and now he kills one friend because that guy is a fucking dickwad. 
That's what I mean is you get betrayal, you get sadness, you get retribution. And to some we spent time with these characters, I thought it did that effectively. Like I said, the one issue, the more I think about it is when the character turns from good to bad because it's gold, they could have done a little bit more development on that matter. A little bit more. I mean, yeah, in the beginning we did a little bit of his family history, like what's going on. But to make that 180 turn, I think there could have been a bit more. That's just me. But overall, this is definitely one of the better John Woo films I've I've seen. I mean, I would still put Hard Target, Broken Arrow, Hard Boiled, and, and such above this, but uh, it was great to, to see this film. So I definitely thank Total Meltdown 2 for recommending this to me. This, this was a fun watch. Like I said, great action sequences, beautiful action scenes, and violence, and the, the guy really knows how to handle that stuff. And apparently this was going to be a sequel to A Better Tomorrow, but then John Woo and Choi Hark had a falling out so Troy Hart's like fine I'm gonna do a better tomorrow three and you do whatever your movie's at so there you go well I, I guess actually a prequel I should say not a sequel I guess a better tomorrow three which I've never seen is a prequel I do wonder though, because this is a film I had not heard much of. I wonder if it starred Chow Yun Fat, which Tony Leon did a good job. But I'm just wondering if it starred Chow Yun Fat, maybe it would get more rec recognition, a bit more fame. Because like Tony Leon is in Hard Boiled as well, but people remember Chow Yun Fat more. Acting wise, like recognition wise, name wise, so. Like I said, while I do like Tony Leon, there's a part of me that kind of would have liked to have seen Chalia Fett to star in this movie. Or even the, the guy and the killer who I always think it's Inframan. But yeah, Tony Leon did, did a good job. I'm just spitballing ideas out here. The music. Once I was a bit surprised at the beginning of the film, I got used to it. It, it did fit the movie fairly well. For the time period. Yeah. A lot of happens. It's not a boring movie. I thought it went at a good pace. It never stalled. And got slow. Again in my opinion. And it's a good emotional story. But also a very well done action. Set piece after set piece. And uh, I miss this John Woo. I, I miss it. I don't want the wind talkers, John Woo. I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of Mission Impossible 2. I don't want that, John Woo. I miss this, John Woo. I miss the killer, John Woo. I miss even Hard Tartar, Broken Arrow, John Woo, which are two of my favorite John Woo films. I miss that. Can we have that, John Woo, back and do a Ninja Turtle movie? I see that. Long time ago, John Woo wanted to produce a animated Ninja Turtle film. I haven't directed Ninja Turtle film with this stuff. I mean, I think that's what reminded me of like these three guys. They're not brothers, but they felt like they were brothers. I'm like, man, if you did a Ninja Turtle film with this emotional core and the development of the characters, again, other than that one guy's 180 turn, but like their friendship bond and then how things go, man, that could be a fucking monumental Ninja Turtle movie and with these type of action scenes I wish in my dreams in my dreams of course if someone's going to be a bad guy I'd have Leo be the bad guy because uh, that's my least favorite turtle and of course I have Raphael be the good guy because just because but hey anyway thanks for watching take care if you've never seen John Woo's Bull in the Head and if you can find a watch with fully uncut with the action ending, again, I don't know where to find it for those who want to see it. And people can leave comments down below. But definitely recommend if you're a John Woo fan. Yeah, I, mean, I would like to pick this up sometime. I don't know if it's out on Blu-ray. 
Uh, I have to look after this. But thanks for watching. Take care. And we will see you guys later. Bye-bye.